G'day there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. <clears throat> um, second video of um, some chairs I modelled in, uh, in Rhino, uh, sort of mid, mid to early 2020. I'm just going over the models um, just quickly, sort of cover various aspects of the modelling. So these, this, this chair is the Dridiard, a soft egg chair designed by Leap Stark. Um, so this was a modelling exercise on my behalf, um, didn't have anything to do with the design or manufacturing of the chairs unfortunately, but these are nice challenging forms um, to try and model in, in Rhino, so that's why I picked this chair. Uh, aesthetically interesting as well. So this is my second video of 2021 at the beach yesterday in the sun, today it's raining anyway. That's what happens on the 2nd of January. So this is the final um, model. Um, just leave some of the more complex areas actually lie around the edge of the chair. There's a split line that runs up the leg and then runs into this rolled edge on the main seat shell. Um, and again, another split line that does the same thing on the inside of the leg. Um, and some interesting challenges to try and get everything blending together and underneath the chair. So I'm just going to um, go back and switch on and off some various layers just to show um, some of my process. So I actually found a rather low fidelity model online, which I used for some of my um, create some of my curves, uh, visual reference only. Um, because noticing on there's some variance between um, this 3D model um, and various 2D uh, line work available online and photographs there's um, some variance in between so I did some um, guesstimation on thicknesses of uh, the, the, the seat shell in various areas and what have you just to make it look right so I created my main curves based on these uh, imported geometries, but, but not um, not to the point where you, you go and um, create lumpy curves, you know. Creating a, a good set of um, geometry to start from was the goal. Okay, so from those curves I created a, a tub form. I decided to make this tub as an overbuilt surface and then trim it back to uh, to the boundary because otherwise if I built this up out of patches I was afraid um, that I wasn't going to get end up with a quite as nice a form as I wanted so with this technique I, I created some um, points along my curves that I want the surface to sort of hit and then you analyze analyze point oh where is it Point set deviation. Okay, so you select your surface and then basically you can set your tolerances and you manually manipulate your CVs on the surface to march the surface in, uh, to zero it in and get it closer to your um, your curves. Very useful function. Um, but basically this tub, I went through various steps of um, tweaking the CVs. So that surface is a U direction degree 5, V direction degree 4 surface. And one side, have a look at this zebra. Okay, so there's our, there's my main tub surface, and I've trimmed back um, the boundary to give us the curved boundary. So again, if I made this out of patches, it could have been problematic because I would have had, say, five, four patches building the surface up uh, and just trying to get it all smooth could have been a bit of a nightmare. So I'm fairly happy with that result. Next up was the, um, the edge roll. So again, went through various um, versions of that. 
So the edge roll is a um, higher, multi, is a multi-span surface, and that was swept around. Um, I did have some time constraints I'd set myself. I wanted to set uh, model one of these chairs a week, in, in amongst having a whole family at home for lockdown. So I did cut a few corners. Um, next, next up was the legs and thickening. I created a, a blend between the front and back of the rolled edge and then I think I did it all again have a look oh no increase the size of the edge roll thickened and started um, creating the leg with the you can see there there's a uh, part line running up the leg which is visible on photographs of the product uh, this part line then blends up into the edge of the seat tub so this is probably the trickiest part of the chair it's the underside creating the blend from the rear leg into the back face of the tub and trying a, a, a various ways of doing it and then um, trying a few scenarios again on the uh, underside to get the blends working with the structure again some more challenging areas in here And getting this blend to run right up and round the back. So that's the front area done. And now onto the back. See the patch structure there changed quite a bit <laughs> in between iterations. Uh, and then last but not least, the stacking hole for the leg. Um, yeah, so this was a fairly challenging uh, exercise to complete, especially in one week. Um, but generally pretty happy with how it turned out. And uh, building the tub as an overbuilt surface and then trimming back was the right way to go. Um, as far as as far as I'm concerned for this model. Got a few renderings here. So uh just replicated the um the colourways that the chair's available in. And pick some of these shots you can really pick up those details. As you can on the uh, photographs of the real chair. Right, I hope you enjoyed that. Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. See ya.